So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at legal stuff. Now, first of all, I want to say I'm not a lawyer, so take everything with a grain of salt. But I've tried to compile this list here of things which I have learned along the way of making a website. Because when I was developing Vincent Lab, I really wanted to make sure that it was actually legal and I wasn't going to get sued. Even though it's a very small website and probably not going to get in the biggest trouble, it is still important to respect the law. And I feel like there's not a lot of videos on YouTube, like any, that actually talks about legal stuff as a developer. You know, I think we all know some basic copyright and stuff like that, and we'll also go over that in this video. Now, I want to first of all say that I'm basing my website on the GDPR because I live in Europe, and I think you should just do the same because you never know when the law is going to change, and you should always take strictest example as your baseline and then you have a pretty good start. But the first thing I want to talk about is this and you've probably seen this and there's a lot of different companies that you can download their code, you plug it in, it's like a script tag and then this essentially runs on your website and they sort of take care of all of the answers and legal stuff and all of that. All you have to do is just install it and then people can just press accept and um, then you can use JavaScript to extract some of the values out of it so you can see what people have accepted or not and lock it yourself and uh, there's a few different companies this one is quancast and uh, it honestly works pretty well but you probably all know how this goes the user press accepts and you know most people are going to do that um, but you can go in here and specify custom properties and if people just hit the accept button they essentially hit accept to all of these things and you as a web developer you have to go in and see what each of these things gives you permission to do so you can see this one gives you permission to this this one gives you permission to this. And there's even under categories. So you can see which you know, companies and stuff like that. Um, most people are just going to work with Google. So Google actually have their own tab here. I have Google Recapture on my website and I just use this one and a bunch of the other ones. I'm not completely sure on which ones to pick. So I've probably picked a little too many. But I just pick what makes most sense. You have to read them a bit careful because they are in legal writings, which sometimes doesn't really make sense. But I feel like they do a pretty good explanation of it. So go ahead and do that. And guys, because I want this video to be relatively short, I will go over this stuff pretty quickly. But if there's a certain thing you want me to talk more about, just comment that thing down below. Then I will maybe do a part two of this where I talk more about those things. So I think most people get this part here. People will hit accept and if you turn some of these options off then you on the website have to disable a plugin let's say you're using recapture as i am you have to go in and actually just delete the javascript tag and then you maybe have to respond with also disabling some inputs because you can't analyze if it's a robot or not and stuff like that you dynamically have to change your website depending on these different options that the user picks but anyways once the user is on the website, then there's a few other legal stuff you have to worry about as well. And one of those are inputs. Now, if you have a website where you don't have any inputs and uh, you don't collect any user data, then really the legal side of it, you don't have to worry about it from the user standpoint. You only have to worry about it when you're talking about stuff like licenses and stuff like that, which we'll go over later. So if you're really, really, really unsure and you don't have the money for a lawyer, maybe start making your website with no inputs. I know that seems very limiting, but if you're really not sure, just start making the website without any inputs and then slow as you read more and learn more and have time to learn more, go ahead and implement those inputs or go with a system like WordPress and they actually take care of all of the legal stuff as well. But once a person has put their first name here and their email, we can actually go ahead and do this. then this will pop up because when we are talking about stuff like this is an email list, then we and also this will happen for all other times that you want to collect information. You have to make the user aware of what you're going to be doing with that data and maybe even having some custom options with what you can do with the data and what you can't do with the data. So you will see that as a general theme throughout my website is that every time you input some data, you just have to acknowledge that I can do X and Y with it and maybe you don't want me to do x but then i will just do y so that's a pretty good approach and you can see here i select how much i can send to them so email direct email custom advertisement now an email to just quickly go over this an email is just a 
general email. Direct email is where I saw that you looked at my videos about PDF files and then I am now sending you an email about an updated course on PDF files. Custom advertisements is let's say you're advertising for another product or you're advertising for your own product then you can send them an email about that. And then the next thing here is something which is very important as well people have to be able to unsubscribe so whenever i send an email there's an unsubscribe button let's say people acknowledge that they can unsubscribe at any time let's say they unsubscribed and then they went on your website and asked for some kind of question and they said yes that you can send them an email. Then they have resubscribed and then you are allowed to send that one message. And depending on how you word this, you might only be able to send that one message. That's gonna be most of the time. Unless it's like conversation where it makes sense. A lot of things, you know, when we talk about the GDPR, it's about being transparent and it's about being user friendly. So the GDPR might actually not be that bad because it's really forcing companies to be more open about what they do with your data and how they're gonna process it. So you can see down here, I tell people that by subscribing here, they acknowledge that platforms like MailChimp and SendGrid will be used to send out their email and they will be seeing their email and the message as well. Also something I do want to say is that it's important that you lock this data because you have to legally be able to prove that people actually clicked it. Well, you might say, well, I haven't asked the user for permission to lock the data, but actually you have. You did that in both the Chromecast pop-up and you also did this in the privacy policy. So yes, you do have the ability to lock people's IP addresses for legal purposes, but only for legal purposes depending on how you worded it in the Chromecast pop-up and in the privacy policy. Make sure to double check how much you're actually able to use that IP address. Most likely it's just going to be for legal purposes and therefore you just have to have it but you aren't allowed to use it for something like advertisement but i think that was enough talk about email lists and permissions now if we go ahead and go here on the contact form I have a contact form and, and here I say the same thing that you just acknowledge the input and stuff like that. But this thing over here, because of the GDPR, and if you are a US-based company and you are serving US-based customers, you don't really have to worry about this part here. But I would just go ahead and recommend implementing it anyways, because it's about being transparent and open. This is a export and delete. Because of GDPR, you have to be able to export all of the data that you have about the user. and be able to send it to them or show it to them and they have to be able to verify the data so it has to be in a human readable format so something like json or csv file and they have to then also be able to delete all that data and let's say that they request every single day their data and using it like a api that is not what it's for and you are allowed to then block them and uh, i'm not sure how many requests you have to give them a month but stick with like three or five that will be a uh, pretty safe and it may be a difficult part to implement depending on how you implemented your system. And that's also why I'm going to say, please keep in mind what data you collect and not because you will have to be able to export that. And if you build your data structure where it's really integrated in other data that they are obviously not allowed to see, then it's going to be very difficult to export that data. So you will have to keep in mind that you will have to export all this data and also be able to delete it without destroying your system or making it very difficult for you. Now let's take a look at the terms of service privacy policy and cookie policy and the third party licenses. Now the terms of service is the legal stuff that allows you to temporarily download my stuff and it also is the thing that allows me to say if I have, let's say, a URL or something that's wrong, that I'm not liable for that URL. And it's also saying that my website is provided as is, so stuff might be wrong. Now, that was the terms of service. And we'll actually go ahead and show you a generator that can automatically generate this for you. And you really don't have to worry about it too much. But we can take a look at the privacy policy. It just says what I do with your data on a more general level. You can see that I go ahead and collect IP addresses automatically and I collect names and emails and I have a legal basis for processing the stuff and I collect information and a bunch of this. You can see all of this that I collect and it's essentially all of the data that I collect. 
And if you scroll further down, you will also see a data controller. And that's also another part about the GDPR. But like I said, all this was automatically generated. And, you know, you just pay one time and that's really it. Uh, you don't really have to worry about it too much. But let's take a look at that website, which I actually used to generate these um, policies here. And the website is getterms.io, if you haven't heard about it. It's just what I've used. It's a pretty simple website. I think I got the custom package or the comprehensive package. Um, not completely sure on that. But just go ahead and pay the $30. I think that was actually the one I got. Because you will get them as a text format. And they will send it on your email. And they will even format it and stuff like that. They will provide a, just a text-based version and a formatted version. And you can essentially just go ahead and put that on your website. And then you're sort of set for that. Now, that is the privacy policies, terms of service, and cookie policy. The last one is the third-party licenses file. That one is a bit different because that is actually all of the third-party licenses that you used to make your website. Now, if you didn't use anything, so you just wrote in HTML and you didn't use any libraries, well, then you don't have to include it. But if we just go ahead and scroll down here, to it, then you can see that it's a giant file with a bunch of MIT licenses and a bunch of other licenses, and they're just put here in this big file. And the reason why it's put in here is so you can go and see which libraries I use to develop Vincent Lab with. And if you go on something like BMW, you can actually also go ahead and get their third party licenses file and see which technologies they used. But how do you actually get this file? So when you download some code, what you have to do is look for their license. Now, some might be Apache, others might be MIT. So you have to go ahead and find which type of license it is. And the license is gonna determine what you can do and what you can't do. And if you're not sure, go ahead and copy the name and then you can actually go ahead and get this website to do a quick summary. So you can see here what you can do, what you can't do, and what you must do. And you can see the must part over here, include the license and the copyright. Now guys, I'm using Angular as my framework and it has the ability to automatically generate this file as long as you're using an NPM package. So if you go on NPM as well, the license will be there. And essentially, Angular automatically generates this file for you. So it's pretty easy. Just keep in mind, if you're using a script tag, then you do have to go ahead and add this manually. I don't know if any of the other frameworks like Vue and React has the same functionality, but just make sure that the third party license file is there and people can view it. But yeah, guys, I think that was it for today. I know I have like brushed over some stuff, but that's just to make the video a bit quicker because I have filmed this before and it was a little long. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button. If you want to see more of my videos, I have included two videos right here. And hopefully see you in the next one.